It's true that many good things come in small packages, but is this one of them? Started full transparency. This unit was sent to us by the lovely folks at Banky Brewing Tools. A huge shout out to them for making it possible for us to create these videos. No money exchanged hands. They have no say in what we've put in this video, and they don't get to watch it before any of you do. Having used this machine almost every day for about a month now, here's our unbiased look at the San Remo Cube. San Remo, an Italian brand known for designing and manufacturing excellent commercial espresso machines like the Opera and the F18, have made their debut into the home espresso market with this cute little thing. So let's start by taking a quick high-level look at the specs to get a feel for what we're dealing with. But don't worry, we'll be digging deep and looking at each aspect of this machine in detail a little later on, so don't go anywhere. The Cube is a heat exchanger type espresso machine and having a basic understanding of how these work will allow you to get the most out of it. It's got an E61 group head and comes in two models, the V, which has a vibration pump, and the R, fitted with a more powerful rotary pump along with a few bells and whistles. While we will be reviewing the V today, we'll reference the R wherever necessary. From a functionality standpoint, the two are very similar with a few small differences. They both sport a 1.9 liter boiler with a max tank capacity of 1.8 liters, with the cube R having the additional option of being plumbed in directly. Honestly, the capacity is not great and the workflow required for heat exchangers makes it even more of an issue. Both models have two pressure gauges, one for steam and the other for the pump. They both have PID controllers to set the boiler temperature. On the Cube V, you have the potentiometer to set the temperature, while the R has a fancy screen and buttons. And both have a 1.5 kilowatt boiler heating element. They're Wi-Fi enabled too, and connect to an app, which is pretty cool. Or is it? Well, like we said, we'll be digging deeper a little later on, so hang tight. They weigh in at 22.7 and 25.6 kgs respectively, so not light, in spite of being tiny, and this says a lot about the build quality. You get a decent set of accessories with two weighty portafilters, filter baskets, a blind basket for cleaning, and everything else you need to get started. Now, we've deliberately not mentioned price here because we hate to ruin a good surprise this early on in the video. And it'll be way more relevant addressing it once you have more information about what this machine is capable of and how it performs. Anyway, so the spec should have given you a decent initial impression of what to expect from the cube, so let's get into it Aramse style. Actually, hang on a second. Now that I mentioned style, we have to talk about how this thing looks. It's gorgeous. Yes, looks are subjective. But I think most of you would agree with me, right? Let me know in the comments below. When you think of an E61 group head espresso machine, what comes to mind? Cold stainless steel, chrome finishes, boxy and quite industrial? While there have been a few exceptions and machines like the Lilith Bianca and a few others do sport some wood accents, these descriptors largely hold true, but what we have here is completely different. If you know of any other E61 machines that break away from this mold, then let us know in the comments. It is a cube, which is technically boxy, but these lovely rounded corners juxtaposed with the angularity of the steam wand, hot water tap, and their knobs, adds so much visual interest. Couple that with a miniature form and the playful colors and you have yourself a truly delightful looking product that really brightens up a space. If you look at the styling, it's kind of like they hired Apple to design it. The customization options offered in-house give it even more clout from an aesthetic standpoint, but have Sanremo focused too much on looks? Well, that's exactly what we're about to find out. So what do you say we get back to taking that deeper look at this little looker of a machine and see what it's capable of? Cool, so let's start with the build quality. Sanremo is known for their excellent commercial espresso machines, which are built like tanks. So we're happy to report that they haven't skimped when it comes to the cube. In fact, this piece right here has traveled across India and has taken quite a battering, but it still works perfectly. Like we mentioned earlier, this isn't a light machine and the weight makes it very stable on the countertop. The knobs and lever feel solid and really nice to use. If we had to nitpick, the top cup holder surface is super prone to scratches, the drip tray doesn't really lock in per se, so you're never really quite sure if it's on right, 
And lastly, you need to make sure these two outlet pipes are aligned correctly or you'll end up with a mess. But overall, really no major complaints with the build quality on this machine. So hopefully you can tell that a video like this takes a ton of time and effort to put together. So a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you'd like to show us some extra love, you can support us on Patreon. Okay, moving on to the inner workings, the Cube is a heat exchanger machine. If you've ever Googled or researched espresso machines, then you've likely heard this term. Largely, there are three kinds of espresso machines, single boiler, dual boiler, and heat exchanger. And if you'd like us to do a detailed breakdown of these with pros and cons and how to pick an espresso machine that's right for you, then let us know in the comments below. So a heat exchanger has one boiler with a large metal tube that runs through it. The water in the boiler is superheated and used to create steam for milk texturing. This water is obviously way too hot to brew with and is where the tube comes into play. Once the pump is engaged to pull a shot, cool water from the tank flows through this large metal tube, gets flash heated, then enters the group head at the desired brew temperature. It's really quite interesting how it works. So while you don't have the ability to set different temperatures for steaming and brewing, the PID allows you to set the boiler temperature quite accurately and gives you a rough estimate of the brew temperatures you can expect at various settings. Now that you've had a crash course in how heat exchangers work, we can talk about why it gets a lot of hate. When a machine like this is idling, the water that's sitting in the large tube gets overheated, which means a part of your next shot is pulled with this super hot water, making your espresso bitter and quite awful. So the simplest way to avoid this is to flush the group head before pulling a shot to cool the water down to brew temperature. While older non-PID heat exchanger machines required long flushes of 20 to 30 seconds, followed by a 15 second wait for it to recover and come back to the right temperature, Newer ones like the Cube seem to handle this much better and only require a couple of seconds of flushing before you brew. So don't be trashing on heat exchanger machines before you've taken a second to understand how they work and how to get good results from them. The Cube uses an E61 group head, which is very popular and very old. It's been around since 1961 and could really use a proper upgrade, but that's a debate for another day. As far as E61 goes, this performs just fine. Next, let's talk about the pump. The lower end V model has a vibration pump, which is cheaper and easier to replace, but also less powerful and less consistent in its pressure delivery and has a shorter lifespan. It does have a gentler ramp up to pressure though, which can help mitigate channeling. The rotary pump on the other hand is more expensive, but is better built, a fair bit quieter than the vibration pump, delivers pressure more consistently and can be directly plumbed in. If you plan to run a small cafe with this machine, then a plumbed in R is definitely the way to go, or you'll drive yourself crazy trying to remember to refill the tank. And that brings us to the first issue we have with this machine. The 1.8 liter tank for a 1.9 liter boiler is just not great, and we find ourselves forgetting to refill all the time. This is particularly annoying if you run out of water mid pull. I guess it's the price you pay for having such a compact machine. So just make sure you're diligent about checking and refilling the tank. The next issue would be pre-infusion, or the lack thereof. While the E61 group head has mechanical pre-infusion built in, this is only true pre-infusion if you're plumbed in and have that line pressure to push water through the puck of coffee at two to four bars of pressure. Otherwise, it's just trickling onto the puck and pre-wetting it, which doesn't really have the same benefits as true pre-infusion. So this is restricted to the plumbed in R model only, which is unfortunate as there are cheaper machines that have pre-infusion and other features like slow pressure ramps. In fact, machines at this price point even have flow profiling, but we'll get to price a little later on. Coming to steam capabilities, the cube is fine in most cases. So obviously the higher your boiler temperature, the better your steam pressure. So if you're at say 124 degrees centigrade and up, you have more than enough pressure to create beautifully textured milk. If however, you like dark roast and you've got your boiler set lower, then you're gonna feel a lack of oomph when steaming. The position of the wand is a tad close to the machine and makes it a bit awkward to get your pitcher in place. It's also not a cold touch wand, which would have been great. In fact, even the steam knob on this unit gets really hot, which isn't ideal. Another niggle would be warm up time. The E61 group head is a big chunk of metal and while Sanremo says the cube will be ready in 10 to 15 minutes, at least 25 to 30 is what we recommend. And that's pretty slow, but luckily you can schedule it to come on at a specific time using the app. This is really nifty, so why don't we quickly talk about the Wi-Fi connectivity and then brew some coffee. So the app isn't winning any UI design awards anytime soon, but it is functional. 
The initial setup to get your device connected to your home Wi-Fi is a tad convoluted, but it's a one-time thing, so it's not such a big deal. Sanremo Australia has a detailed video on how to get this set up, which we've linked to in the description below. Once you're set up, you can control your cube from anywhere, which is pretty neat. Anyway, let's take a look at the app and work our way down from the top. The four icons on the top from left to right show you if the machine is on standby, if it's powered on, if you have scheduling turned on, and the last one is a warning indicator if there are any issues that need to be addressed. Below this, you have some useful information like the boiler temperature, which you can actually set directly from here if you have the R model, but with the V, it just displays what the potentiometer is set to. It even shows you the estimated brew temperature that the current boiler setting will give you. Next to that, you have the water level indicator, which will call for your attention very often. Curtsy the capacious water tank. You also have a filter health indicator. Moving down, there's an extraction timer and a daily count of cups you've brewed. Lastly, you have a toggle to put the machine on standby. Then jumping into settings, you see probably the most useful feature, which is programming. So for example, you can have the machine wake up an hour before you need your first cup and have it be hot and ready to go when you're up. You can even customize scheduling for every day of the week, which is really nifty. Counters are used to keep track of usage and your consumption. Wi-Fi alarms and user settings are quite self-explanatory. And Cube Connect does nothing right now, so we're assuming it hasn't been implemented yet. So that's the smart side of this machine, if you will. And while it's not groundbreaking by any means, at least it's not gimmicky and offers some nice features. But is this enough to justify the price tag? Well, I really need some coffee before I can answer that question, so let's pull a shot first. This is a tasty shot and that's no surprise. This is a well-made E61 heat exchanger machine, so if you know what you're doing, you're gonna be able to get good coffee out, provided you put good coffee in, obviously. But now that I have some coffee in me, I think I'm ready to address the elephant in the room, the price. As we've seen, this is a well-built, beautiful looking espresso machine that's compact and capable of brewing good espresso. While it has its flaws like the small tank capacity, by far its biggest flaw is the price. With the price ranging from 2 lakh Indian rupees going all the way up to 2.45 lakhs and similarly around 2,800 to $3,400 in the US, we think it's really overpriced for the feature set that it offers. You're much better off getting something like the Profitec Pro 500, which has near identical specs and a bigger tank for a lot less money. Yes, it doesn't look as nice and you don't have the built-in Wi-Fi, but neither of these justify the price difference. And if you're willing to spend this much money, you're going to get way more bang for your buck with something like the Lilith Bianca, which is a dual boiler machine that can do flow profiling. So while the Cube would be a great addition to your coffee station, it becomes very, very hard to recommend at this price. So I'll say this, if you're someone who's unfazed by the price, don't really care about extra features like pre-infusion and flow profiling, and you love how it looks as much as we do, then go for it. It's made by a very reputable brand and will serve you well for many years. But Sanremo, if you're watching this, then please fix the price or add another boiler. The choice is yours. And on that note, it's time to wrap this one up. But now we'd love to hear from you. Do you own the cube? Is there anything we missed? And does your experience align with ours? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and brew our arms safe.